Ethan Cruz with Carlson Software. Once you in install Precision 3D, uh, you'll, it does install two different icons. One icon is the LandXML free edition, which essentially has a, uh, is a free version for viewing LandXML files. Um, you can do uh, one or two um, other things with it as well, but it's really designed to be a free LandXML viewer. And then we have the, 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 the full product, which is the uh, blue translucent uh, icon. So you're just going to double click on that to start the full version. And you'll see for the, the first time you're looking up at the sky. <clears throat> but what I want to go over is uh, best practice in window layout and, and what works pretty well uh, organizationally. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to left click on this object commands window. I'm just going to hold that down and I'm going to pull it and move it. So you'll notice that as I move the windows around, um, P3D is telling you where, where you can dock it with a little blue preview box. So once you get that, and I want to put this uh, dock to the top. And then I also want to make it uh, a bit larger. The next thing that I want to do is I want to put my scene explorer below the property explorer and that's because the properties are the things that you see most often and it's it's easier to be in your eyesight above the scene explorer and I'm going to accomplish that by simply again left clicking on this on the title bar for the scene explorer dragging it down below the tab and you see the blue preview so that that'll put it on the tab as a new tab but I want to take it below that control and then obviously you can you can resize them uh, in, in between. So I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger. So the property explorer and scene explorer are very commonly used, uh, as is this object command. So these are fairly um, important windows to to highlight. Um, this output window scenario on the right hand side of the screen is where you see a lot of messages. You can't type in there like a, a command line or anything, but it is where we report a lot of different um, output and status. The light control is, is simply used to um, increase or decrease uh, the intensity of the light, the brightness, the contrast, and then to move the sun around um, in the sky. But essentially, once you have it set up to your preferences, you're, you're really not gonna wanna see that um, anymore. The active snap settings uh, are used for these specialized snaps for the uh, angle offset, distance offset, and our elevation snap. And uh, again, it's not something that's really commonly used. So what I'm going to do is click on that title bar, and I'm going to add it to the tab list by making sure that it's going right on top of, of this particular control. And you'll notice that it's now the first tab but the first tab is always going to be shown by default, and the most interesting tab is the tooltip tab. So what I'm going to do is set it active. I'm going to pull it away, and then I'm going to redock it on this, and that's going to make it uh, first and foremost. So now we have our tooltips. So the tooltips, uh, which I'll demonstrate in, in, in a minute, this is a very important feedback as you're moving your mouse around and as you're inspecting your scene. This is where object commands will show up as you select objects. This is where the properties for the different objects will be shown as you select them. And the scene graph explorer is where you're gonna find um, all the objects that are loaded in your current scene. And again, I'm gonna make my output window a little bit smaller. Now, once you have your window set up, um, uh, and then when you exit uh, Precision 3D, then what's gonna happen is it's going to save and remember where all of your windows um, were how they were docked and their size so the layout is automatically saved for you now the next thing i'm going to do is go into tool settings so if you are in a, a, a country where we have done a translation then you can select uh, your language from this drop down list uh, the system default is um, american english your project path uh, is by default set to our program data, but um, typically users have them set somewhere else. And at Carlson, we have a, a Carlson projects folder. 
that we use. And this will be the default location where, where you load and save um, data to and from. So just like any other software's project data um, uh, directory. Uh, you can also enable or disable the, the Windows Explorer preview. And what that does is it shows you a thumbnail icon for Land XML files, Carlson 10 files, so that you sort of have an idea of what they look like before you actually open them. Uh, the maximum view distance, uh, a lot of times um, I recommend uh, 8,000. The refresh rate really depends on, on the machine that, that you're on. And, and essentially what this does is this sets a target refresh rate for, for your screen. Uh, so it, it renders smoothly for your system. So if you have a really fast system, you could set it up higher. Uh, but typically 30 is considered to be smooth motion. Uh, we have the, our different skybox backgrounds. Uh, the default is this tropical sunny day, but I happen to like the uh, thick clouds, low water. It's a little bit darker. The polyline thickness and the highlighted polyline thickness uh, basically just uh, allows you to, to control how thick these, these polylines look in the scene. And... For my particular machine, I know that three and eight or uh, three and seven um, work pretty well. Um, you could also turn on show shadows uh, if you're going to be doing presentations and stuff, but it, it does um, consume additional resources, uh, system resources. So uh, unless your machine has got a, a high end video card, you could um, notice some performance degradation there, but you'll get a, a much improved quality of, of, of render. And then when that's enabled, you can modify these render resolutions. If you want to use P3D on a uh, touch touch screen enabled uh, device, then you can enable the, the touch input, which basically allows you to use your finger or pen to uh, click, uh, double tap, uh, and then pinch, zoom, the typical uh, touch enabled uh, type of, of commands. This gets us into units. P3D has a very uh, flexible um, system for units, and that is uh, we don't just simply have a metric or or uh, imperial uh, setting. We allow you to uh, basically mix and match. So in, in my, um, just to give you a quick, uh, I'm going to go through in the diameter. Let's see, we'll make these centimeters. So what I'm going to do is create a metric set and, and save it. Time is the same everywhere. Slope, uh, we'll go to hectares, cubic meter, um, typically Celsius. And then for each one of these settings, you can also modify the um, amount of precision that, 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 that you see, which is the number of um, decimal places for all the values that you see in the UI. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a save as, and I'm going to call it metric units. So that's how you would do that. I'm just going to go back to the, the default settings, which, which are um, what I'm going to be doing the data demonstration in today. Before I get to projection on the surface tab, we have uh, color mappings. So if you're a Carlson user and you have a Carlson colorized tin, then you can specify the colors. And we, and we come with a default mapping that's fairly um, uh, typical uh, to our Carlson Office product. And this associates a texture uh, to a particular color of triangles. And you can edit that so I can go in and I can select a different um, texture for the different colors. Um, if you're going to use our hydrology uh, plugin, you can also modify the, the curve number and the uh, runoff coefficient, which affects the watershed calculations. But in this case, I'm just going to cancel. 
we have uh, the color slope mapping. So if, when you put the uh, a tin surface into um, show the slope mapping, you can come in here and you can change and modify the colors and the percents um, for each one of the ranges. So basically, uh, the, the default range is um, essentially based on um, how water would flow. So basically, uh, if it's less than 1%, it's not going to flow much, so it's red. Um, between um, that and uh, 2%, you're going to get uh, green, which is a, a typical design slope. Um, yellow is, is 4. Again, not an unusual design slope. And then it, really anything. And then 8 is pretty steep and then anything else water is going to flow really fast so that's the thinking behind this this range so water doesn't flow uh, much here and it increasingly flows faster and faster going down there but you can make this anything that you want we have triangulation settings um, that are similar to what we have in our carlson um, office package and essentially this is just uh, allowing you to specify whether or not you want us to fill in holes um, on the in interior of surfaces when we go to do the triangulations. And then when we do exterior uh, surfaces, when you have uh, uh, concave sort of edges in your surface and you don't want to have those really large external triangles, this, this allows you to specify that maximum triangle length. Which leaves projections. We do install a, a default set of projections um, they almost uh, inevitably are all in um, meters. These are all metric sets uh, based on, or, or based on WGS84. And what we found is that there's a uh, large number of times where you need to work in different projection systems that we don't ship. So we do provide a mechanism uh, to manage these projections. So if, if there's some in here that you don't want, you can just highlight it and delete them. But the more important thing is to add the projections that you work with typically. And so what I'm going to, so if you have a, a .prj file or a proj file, you can import it by, by selecting it here. And I'm not, I'm not even sure if I, if I have one, we'll go to my projects, take a quick see now I don't really have any but if you had one then basically um, you just click on it and then if we're able to import it you know, you'll, you'll see the information show up here and then the actual text for it uh, but what I'm going to show you is how to download and in, in, install one from spatialreference.org so basically we'll pop up a web browser um, that goes to spacereference.org and the goal, as the dialog says, is highlight the OGC WK text and press OK. So how do we get there? Well, first I'm going to type in a search string for Kentucky because I want a, uh, I, I need a, a Kentucky North NAD83 in US survey feed. And here it is in the list. Um, but before then, I'm going to pick a single zone, a Kentucky single zone, also NAD83. And I'm going to import it first. So at, once you click on it, you could scroll down to the left-hand side and uh, select the OGC WKT. Now we're at the point where we can highlight it. So with the left mouse button, I'm going to click and drag. And then that's going to enable the OK button. And I'm going to press, I'm going to click on the OK button. It's going to prompt me for the name. You can edit the name here, but we parse it out of the, out of the uh, string itself. And then most importantly is, is we, you need to specify the vertical um, uh, projection units. So essentially, the, uh, we have the horizontal and we have to have uh, the vertical when, when you're bringing in uh, GIS data from various uh, sources. So I'm going to leave it in, in US survey feet. And you can see that that just added um, Kentucky single zone. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this again and I'm going to go back to Kentucky. 
uh, do a Kentucky North. Click on that again, and then click on the OGC WKT. Click with my mouse button at the top and drag my mouse down to the bottom to highlight the text. Click OK, accept the name, um, the default US survey feet, which is what the horizontal unit is, and that's what we want. And I'm just going to hit OK. And so once you do that, if uh, since there wasn't a, um, a default spatial uh, projection uh, that was set when you initially install the product, uh, now we have the, the, the two Kentucky North and the uh, Kentucky Single Zone added to our projection. And the last one that I basically brought in has become our, our default. And I'm going to um, select OK. And that really pretty much is all of the, the setup kind of th uh, stuff uh, for the product. So now you can see the low uh, clouds, so it's uh, a little bit darker. Now that projection setting is used whenever you create a new scenario where the, where the product starts back up. And you could see that when we first started up, the scenario didn't have a projection system, um, but now it does. So, and, and you could change the spatial reference and also the vertical exaggeration for everything in your current scenario. So every one of our scene files can have one to many different scenarios. Um, inside of it. Each scenario can have its own projection system. So that is really setting up and um, and getting started. I think I am going to make, uh, I'm going to load a, a quick surface here. So we also have a nice convenient drop down list. just to show you how the object commands work and how to configure them. So I want to minimize the, the um, amount of space that my object commands take up. But as I as you select different kinds of objects in the scene, I'm just going to draw a quick polyline here. Um, and I've selected my polyline. You notice that we have different object commands, which are the same commands that you see if you right click on an object. Uh, it'll give you all the different kind of commands that you can do on that object. So if I select the surface, you notice uh, a different set of, of commands where I can do merges and edits and water drop features and all that kinds of, of, of thing. And then you also notice over in the property windows on the left hand side that I'm seeing the properties for the surface. So we get the, the area, the length, the width, and then some options like uh, do I want to show contours or not? Do I want to show the triangles? or not, what the contour step is, show low points. So these are a variety of display options on a surface. Whereas if, if you if you highlight a polyline, we have uh, whether or not it's draped to surface or in 2D mode or in 3D mode, um, and then what the surface is that it's being draped um, onto, and then what, what the color is. So if I want to change the color property, I would just change the color this way. And this is where that, that setting for the um, Polyline thickness comes into play. So right now this polyline is highlighted, so it's being drawn thicker and it's a little easier to see. And when I press escape, it's no longer selected, so it's being drawn a little bit thinner um, in the background. And that's essentially how, uh, and then as far as selections are concerned, we have a sort of CAD-like behavior on a selection set. So if you click and hold the um, right mouse button down and start pulling to the left, you get a crossing window. Uh, and, the, and these windows don't work with surfaces because surfaces are really big and they're easy to click on. But uh, So the windows uh, basically work the same way as most CAD packages. So if you, uh, again, click and hold down the right mouse button and start pulling to the left, you get a crossing window. And if you cl click and hold on and pull to the uh, right, you're going to get a contains window. So basically, this is whatever it touches and crosses. This is the fully contained window. So like CAD, um, that's that's just the way that works. So to select these with a crossing, it's it's pretty easy. And then once you do have an object selected, you're going to get the object commands up here, uh, which shows you everything that you can do with that object, and essentially. Um, 
This is also configurable, so you can add and remove, which I want to put that back in. Uh, you can you can add and remove commands, and then you can also uh, increase or decrease the size of the icons. So here I'll make them 32 instead of 24, so they stand out a little bit. So if you have um, really sharp eyes and you don't need large icons, then you can uh, sort of minimize this so you maximize your uh, 3D workspace area. And then to actually get started using the product, now that we've got it all set up, we've got our windows where we want it, we've imported our um, spatial uh, references, we've set up our colors, and and now essentially what you do is, is you use the, the loading toolbar up here. You can also create a, a blank and, and empty surface if you're just going to uh, get started and and, pl and play with uh, P3D for the first time, you can create a basic surface, which is just a rectangle. And you can go in and start doing things uh, on that. But it's more typical to either load a land XML file, and in, and, and in this case, it loads the first surface, um, uh, excuse me, it loads all of the, the, the contents in the land XML file. So uh, for example, you get polylines. Let's see if I can find one here. So in this case, it's brought in uh, a land XML file that has a composite surface. It has an existing ground surface. And I can turn these on or off by using our, our display visibility. So I can, if I don't want to see that out there, I can do that. Um, we have alignments and we have parcels. But you notice that they're drawn on a 2D plane. So if you hit the plan view icon, you're looking straight down on, the, on this stuff. Um, since there's no guarantee that there's a surface in the land XML file, uh, when you import uh, any any geometry, we set it to 2D mode, but that's very easy to, to change by just multi-selecting. And you get a folder for each object type, right? So you get parcels, and then you get the list of names for each parcel. And as you select an item in the scene graph explorer here on the left, it gets highlighted in the scene. If I pick something out here in the scene, it gets highlighted so EG is now highlighted uh, and selected, and we're seeing the properties for for that. You, you can also grab the entire folder and, and multiple folders, and I can tell it that I actually want to drape it to the surface. And now all of the all of the polylines are now draped to the surface. We import uh, Kogo points as well, so uh, we can. go in and, and double clicking on, on any object in the scene explorer will automatically zoom to it. Uh, for points, we can select the folder and we can tell it to show the description, for example, and we can see where all of our control points are. And then we can turn that off. It gets a little bit busy. So that's really the, the basics of how you, how to um, launch P3D 2017 uh, for the first time, how to lay out your windows, do your initial settings, and then getting started by loading a Linux XML file, uh, loading a, a surface, and these surfaces can be a Carlson tin file, it could be a Carlson grid file, a land XML surface, a DXF surface, and also a, a USGS a DEM surface. Additional data that you can bring in, you can bring in uh, Car Carlson CRD files uh, from our survey products. You could also import polylines from files, which are land XML files, uh, ESRI shape files, Carlson.cl files and Carlson.pln files. You can also bring in point clouds. So we do have fairly extensive uh, and, and, and quick point cloud um, behavior. So essentially, uh, you could bring in uh, a variety of point clouds. So I'll just bring in uh, a couple here real quick. 
you don't need that one. And, uh, the, and we, su we support uh, more uh, one to N of these guys. And then we, we also uh, automatically read the projection out of the, um, out of the point cloud if possible. And the default setting is, is to use the projection from the file. So really we're just gonna handle this uh, transit translation uh, for you. And then basically uh, you just select, uh, we have a few options on, on here, but then you just select uh, load point clouds. And we, we load in the point clouds and then you could do things with it. So that's basically how you uh, get started. And then the, the variety of data types that you can start with to um, start bringing in data of, of, uh, of different kinds. And that concludes this video.